In this video, we're going to learn how to use deleted functions in C++. We can declare a deleted function in C++ by using the delete specifier, which will cause the compiler to disable the usage of the function. We could use deleted functions to disable the default implicitly declared member functions that C++ will automatically give our classes, if we don't want our objects to have those member functions and their behaviors. So for example, let's make a class called unique where each object instance of this class should have a unique ID. We'll make a private member variable called ID to store this ID. We'll make a class variable called next ID. And next ID is going to keep track of the next ID to use for the next object instance that's created. And we'll initialize next ID to one. We'll say int unique colon colon next ID is equal to one. Now, when each unique object instance is created, we're going to use next ID for that object's ID. So we'll define a constructor here for unique, and we're going to set the ID member variable to the current value of next ID. We'll also increment next ID so the next object that's created will have the next available ID. We'll also make a function called getID to actually return the ID. So getID is just going to return the value of ID. Let's make some unique objects now. We'll say unique, unique one, unique, and we'll have unique two, and then we'll make one more, unique, and we'll have unique three here. And then we'll output the ID of each one of these objects. So we'll have C out unique one ID colon, and we'll output the unique one object's ID using that get ID member function. We'll do the same thing with unique two and unique three so that we can see their IDs as well. So we'll say two and three and then two and three. And if we save and run our program, we're going to find that each object does have a unique ID. So unique one has the ID one, unique two has the ID two, and unique three has the ID three. Now with objects like these that are supposed to have this unique ID, there's some default operations we'd probably want to disable. So for example, we could say here, unique three is equal to unique one. And if we save this and run it now, we're going to find that unique three now has the ID one. If we want our objects to have this unique ID, this probably doesn't make sense to even allow this operation to occur. This is called the assignment operation. We can call this the copy assignment operator. There's also something called the copy constructor. So for example, we could say unique three is equal to unique one. And even though this looks pretty similar to the last example, this is actually something different. This is called the copy constructor. It'll have the same effect though. If we save and run the program, we're going to get that unique three now has the ID one. So this is another thing we'd probably want to disable. We can use the deleted functions concept to help with this. Let's disable the copy constructor first. What we'll say here is unique for the constructor and it's the copy constructor. So it's going to accept a constant reference to a unique object. And normally this is where we could provide a custom definition for the copy constructor. But instead what we're going to do is set it equal to delete. So this here is the delete specifier. It's going to turn this copy constructor into a deleted function. That means the compiler is going to disable it. So if we try to save and run a program, we actually get a compiler error here. It says, call to deleted constructor of unique and we just can't use it anymore. And that's a good thing because using it would imply that an error is going to occur because our objects would no longer have unique IDs. We want to disable it. We could also disable the assignment operator as well. So for example, if we had unique three is equal to unique one, this will still work. We can still compile this and we still get a non-unique ID. 
to disable this would be pretty similar. We just say unique reference operator equals const unique reference is equal to delete. And now we've deleted what's called the copy assignment operator. And if we save and run our program, we should get an error down here, and we do. The text of the error message is a little bit different because with the assignment operator, it's this overloaded operator, and it's saying here, overload resolution selected a deleted operator. So it's still making reference to the fact that the operator has been deleted. So this is how we can use deleted functions in C++ to have the compiler disable usage of a function. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.